BB, how you doing? You're talking to the dog. If you're not looking at the screen, I wasn't talking to you. Talking to Turbo. He was just rolling around playing with his sticks. Why does everything look so washed? Is my exposure up? Yep. Crank that down. That's better. I just finished filming a power pump video that it was just total disaster. Like an hour and 45 minutes of footage that I just, I'm gonna, I'm trashing it all and I'm gonna start over again. There's been a lot of air traffic today, just constantly planes going back and forth and back and forth. When I was filming the video, I started out on the ground over here because that's where the light was. This time of year, the sun is at an angle in the sky where there's pretty much only one spot to film videos and it's right here. Otherwise, everything ends up backlit and what, whatever. I was sitting on the ground and it was about every one and a half to two minutes there's a plane going overhead for a while. It wasn't constantly like that. There would be like 10 minute breaks here and there, but I just, I lost my mind with that. I couldn't take it. It just throws the rhythm off. Like you start to talk and you get into a flow and then that happens. And I've gotten pretty good over the years. Have a lot of practice here talking through the noise and talking through distractions. How many times have you guys seen a dog run through the garden and do something you know he's not supposed to be doing? I'm not even noticing it. I tone it out because I'm focused on what's going on here with the camera. But when it's a care video, it just, it just, it wasn't working. It was too much noise, way too much background noise, mess up all the audio. So today is off to a frustrating start. I took a break from everything and just kind of whew, had to calm down. Because when I get my mind on something, if I can't get it done, I get grumpy. Not the best attribute. I'm working on it. When my head's in the game, I like to keep it in the game. And something comes in and tries to mess with my game, then it needs to get the hell out of my life. But can't control the air traffic. He's having a good time. Always having a good time. Such a sweetheart. Oh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's a beautiful evening. Beautiful-ish. It's kind of chilly. I'm actually sort of cold. I have to readjust to the cooler weather. I have these plants set up on the table here because when I moved the filming over to the table because the camera kept overheating over there just because the sun was so strong, I, I needed to get under the shade here and everything was backlit so that this wouldn't focus. So I just I started piling plants on the table, which kind of worked. Yeah, it, it, it did okay. Wasn't quite what I needed. If you haven't figured it out yet, I don't really have a tone or a plan for this video. There are certainly some things that need to get done though. I'm starting this video a week and a half before it's going to come out because Saturday, the Saturday prior to when this video comes out, it's going to be a garden tour instead of a vlog. Cause that's like the end of the month into the first of the month. And there are some things I need to do before that garden tour, like handle all these mums here, which I don't, I didn't get these to leave them sitting here on the patio, but when I come outside every day in the morning and I just see this gorgeous rainbow of flowers over here, it really does just brighten everything up for me. So much color and there's like bees and butterflies all over the place. It's really magical, but that's not why I got them. Most of these are going to go into the front landscape. I'm going to hold back on some of these for the backyard. I don't think I'm going to get spinning on this tonight, but it's good to talk about it. So I have a nice plan set out for the morning. I'm thinking the uh, single flowered pink ones right here. I have six of those, of those chrysanthemums. I'm going to be moving those over here because you see what's going on with these zinnias? Can you, you see? Look at how bad. Yeah, powdery mildew. I d it's just that I, I don't... It happens. These gardens, perfect. And uh, this is just something I tend to deal with with zinnias. You need to get them into bright, bright light with good airflow. I don't have full sun this time of year. That's just not the way things work in my yard, but I still give them a shot. And I usually get a good like four to six weeks out of them. And then they start to look like this and I just cut them out. There are things you can do for powdery mildew, but I just prefer to not. It's easier just to get them out of here and toss them. There are too many other plants that can be affected by it. Typically with the powdery mildew, it's not something I really worry about spreading all that much because it usually doesn't. It pretty much always sticks to the zinnias and the pumpkins. That's it. So I'm going to want to do something about that. Obviously, you can't just leave those in there. Wouldn't be shocked if there's something on those butterfly bushes that are in there too. So I'll probably be pulling those out and moving them to, there's a little spot around the corner here where there's a lot more sun because they will need it. And uh, then maybe move those purple chrysanthemums up there and do something nice here and start doing some stuff in the front. The front yard, I, I don't like to show it just for security reasons. I don't think it's the wisest thing to be showing the front of your house on the internet to people, right? It depends on where you live, but I'm not like out in the country. I'm 
you know, in a city. There are a lot of people around. So I will try my best to get like nice close shots. It's like five, six minutes into this video. I don't know that I need to keep speaking in an introductory manner. May as well get the ball rolling. The viburnums over here, I don't think I'm gonna get these planted just yet, but I may as well get them placed so they're not sitting over here on the patio. Oh, do you see it? Do you see what's over there? You see that, see that gem? It's not in focus. Got a hose reel. I don't, I don't think it's gonna work out, but I gave it a try. This hose is too big. It's a one inch hose. That thing said it can fit 225 feet. This is a 75 or 100 foot hose, but it's just, it's not working. I have to sit on top of it <laughs> to roll it in, like to get enough leverage and to pull it out. Somebody else has to come out and sit on top of it to pull the hose out. It's just too much hose for that box. That's not work. <laughs> not gonna work. I need something more heavy duty for that spot. All right, I think that this is, this is good. In the morning, can play some viburnums, get those mums moved around to the front, get those junipers planted and do some cleaning and some mulching. Hopefully I got some mulch over here that just looks nice to get it spread. It's been bothering me. There's some areas, you'll see the front. It's the front yard's bad. Oh, it's really bad. I don't even want to show it, but it's part of gardening. Sometimes we have areas that we just don't tend to and then things go awry and then you, know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Get in there and get things fixed up. Ever just lay on the ground, just, you know, kind of for jits and shigs. Hey, Turbo. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Don't lick the lights. Don't lick the lights. Good morning. Whoa. Very up close. Just laying on the ground, playing with the dog, looking at the palm trees. Hey, there's a view of the queen palm you don't get very often. This thing's gotten so big, it's actually hard to see the way it's blended in there with the pine tree. I was actually thinking I need to... No, we're not going to go into that right now. Maybe later. It's time to get these things moved. Last night I had a burst of energy and I started doing some work out front, mostly just kind of test digging some holes and seeing what I was getting myself into. It looks pretty rough out there right now from all the digging. What are you doing? Stop it. Stop. Stop, Turbo. Not everything's about you. Get off of me. Dogs get so excited when you get down on their level. The next step, I'm sorry, I'm still waking up. Need to get these mums moved. I think that that's probably going to take longer than anything. Even with the gorilla cart, I think I can only probably get like five of those in there at a time. What is, what's your deal? What's your deal? It's probably you, you're smelling. All right, okay, that's enough. You're just gonna keep sticking your butt in my face? That's not fun for me, Turbo. I bought all this mulch to put in this space that I'm working on right now. And get all the mums and the junipers planted. Figured it would be good to have a nice fresh layer of mulch to finish that space off with, but it... I don't think there's gonna be room for mulch by the time I get all these mums put in there. Not really sure what I was thinking there. Okay, haven't used this in a while. Man, it is sunny. Hey, baby, such a good boy waiting to come through. Why are they all these cords pulled out? What, I didn't, Turbo, what are you doing? You have a seat, you stay. He has to have permission across the line. He knows that. It's always been that way with the dogs. Okay, all right, getting my brain put on. Going to get the, this is a nice view. Apparently, I'm not getting my brain put on. Let's start gathering up moms. We'll go out to the front yard and have a look at what's going on over there. That was naughty. I just came over, set down the first load of moms, and then I hear Turbo come running through. And as soon as I turn around, he's like, you can't see me. I see you. You're not supposed to be here. Are you just going to crawl? Okay, crawling is fine. He doesn't run away. He doesn't chase people. We spend a lot of time out here in the front yard playing with frisbees and stuff so he can... It's okay. It's not great that he came back here without permission, but that's not the point right now. Is it here? <laughs> I mean, just look at it. Don't think I need to explain much here. I didn't do much with my front yard this year. <laughs> not very much at all. And I've already come through here and started digging things up. There were a good amount of weeds. Still are. I've been hitting them with dead brew. It's like kind of working, but not really. I need to come in and redefine this edge right here. Next year, there's going to be a retaining wall put in down here where you see these stones. So like a Windsor wall that will come up and level the garden out from here to the side of the house. And it's gonna come through an arch around and come up and curve and twist through here. So I don't really, actually, I don't know if any of that was relevant. I'm not doing anything over there right now, so never mind. I already started digging the hole for one of the Taylor junipers. If you don't know, I'm gonna have a Taylor juniper on each side of the path here. I don't know why I started to walk up towards the front. So centered in between each one of these poles. 
that's where those are going to go. And then I have a little gem magnolia, which is supposed to go over here, centered between those two windows, far forward where there's a dead rhododendron right there. But uh, there's a water line there, so I have to go back to the drawing boards and what to do with that one. Right now I'm just focused on this area right here. Going to get the junipers in the ground and then fill the rest of the spot in with mums. You see what I'm saying? That once these mums are in here, there's not going to be a lot of room for mulch, but we'll still get in there and scattered around because it needs a heavy layer of mulch to help suppress down what's left of the weeds that are over here. The majority of the weeds are just little, um, what are they? Like the wild violets and some strawberries. It's like the wild strawberries. Generally mulch is all it takes to suppress those. The grasses, on the other hand, those I was spraying in. Trying to dig out. That's why there's a lot of roughed up stuff over here. Some of the grass I just dug it up and tossed it. Did you just find your frisbee? He found his frisbee. Keep that sitting in a pot right over there and he knows where it is. <laughs> he loves that toy so much. Keeps him occupied for a long time. Okay, it's the only other thing. You may remember from years ago, there used to be a very large Japanese maple right here. It was a blood good Japanese maple. The thing got, it was probably like 15, 16 feet high. One, it was too big for the spot. Whoever put it there, like they, maybe they didn't know it was going to get that big. And it ended up getting either a root wrap or some type of disease. And arborist came out and looked at it and said, that needs to go. So it went. The stump was ground out all the way on that one. So there shouldn't be any stump left down there. But there are still some roots. And the roots are gnarly. Like, really, those are going to be fun to try and get through. I have a feeling getting this whole dug is going to take a very long time. Hosses are going to go, but I don't... Those were like from a bag at Walmart like 10 years ago. I'm not attached to those hostas. I can get those moved to somewhere in the backyard. I'm going to go gather the rest of the mums by hand because the gorilla cart doesn't have any air in the tires and I don't feel like messing with it. See how many trips that's going to take. You start getting that space looking nice again. You're such a good boy. You better come with me though. You're supposed to stay with me. Come on, let's go. Let's get some mums. Is there a way I can like strap the mums to your side? Like some saddlebags or something? That'd be fine. Probably almost 100% destroy the mums, but it looked cute. Make for a good picture. What is this? I think... Well, this is beautiful. I don't even want to plant them anymore. I just want to have a front porch just full of mums with the colors arranged more evenly. Like this would drive me nuts. Isn't that stunning? And that's... I just set them down. That's it. I didn't like try and position them or anything. They're just sitting there. Right where I dropped them. No thought put into it. Neither here nor there. Well, kind of here and there because this is... I'm tempted to maybe grab some hay bales and head back to that nursery and grab several more. By several, I mean like maybe 15 or 20 and just fill the front porch with mums. Wouldn't that just look fantastic? Oh, but then I'd, I'd have to water them all. Never mind. I don't feel like doing that. All right, I'm going to start digging. And uh, hopefully there will be some kind of nice looking before and after. But that's, it's going to be a minute until we get there. Uh, tree root. Very big tree root. Got the saw out and that got it cut up. So worked out okay. Took like 40 minutes. That was mostly my fault for being dumb. Not really dumb, but I just didn't use the right size blade. I couldn't tell how deep the, doesn't matter, it's done. Got this mofo cut out of the middle of that hole so I can get the juniper in there over here. Holes are ready to go. Juniper in the middle, 10 holes for the mums. There should be... Yeah, there'll be enough to do 10 on each side. I am wondering if that's going to be enough, but uh, I guess we'll find out. I'm also not sure if I'm actually going to plant them. Mums or just drop them in their pots. Because it'd be a lot easier just to lift them back out when they die back. You ready? Ready to see it? Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, that's... Okay, believe it or not, I don't have enough mums. I thought I did, but... Nope, because I forgot that I had expanded this out and I can see through the camera that I need to bring this over and get rid of that corner right there. It's amazing how sometimes you see something through the lens that I'm just like, that doesn't come through in person as being a problem, but I would like for this to kind of connect. It doesn't matter right now. Junipers are nice and centered. It's kind of hard to tell when I'm not able to pan up and give like a proper look at things, but I'm not showing that much the front of my house. They are, believe, just trust me, they're centered. <laughs> I have 17 mums on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 6 right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, okay, whatever the case. There are some holes that need to be filled over here, like right there, right here, a couple more right there. And I think that that would make it look a lot more nice. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. So I'm not, not complaining. I think this looks fantastic. But 
there are some holes I really wanted this to be totally filled in and I didn't have anywhere near enough to get this side done however there are massive roots in here and almost every single one of these holes except for two that I tried to dig I had to use the saw to cut out a giant root I'm not all that motivated to go and throw another 10 of these in the ground over here but I don't like the way the color scheme works out with like having one and two and things start to alternate I really like for things to look more random or just be a single color so that's the only reason I'm tempted to go get some more. I also just remembered uh, I have deer now. That's a newer thing over the last few years. Deer have moved into the neighborhood, so this may not be here tomorrow. I'm gonna give it a couple days before I make any decisions about grabbing more mums. If they're gonna get eaten, what's the point? I still need to sweep up and wash off. Got a huge load of mulch put down, a proper three to four inch layer, really, really thick in here because this bed had worn down, needed to be slowly brought back up and for weed suppression really need at least three to four inches i'd say go closer to four and a proper not like the oh i did a three inch mulch but you stick your finger down and it's like that much no actual three inches big 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 heavy layer i think that's going to help things a lot i do like all the color i just don't like the holes but it's fine the junipers are the main point here they're the ones that will be around for hopefully many years to come these will go three feet wide 20 feet high which will be just below those pillars up there. I've noticed once these hit about 12, 14 feet, the growth does start to slow on them some. They're fairly fast to get going though otherwise. And I think that that will look nice, having the little green on each side. The magnolia haven't gotten to that yet because I need to get a pipe person to come out and let me know what's going on with those. Oh, and I uh, forgot to mention this when I planted the magnolia in the prior video, or no, two weeks ago, whenever I got the magnolia planted. I have these planted up about an inch and a half to two inches above the soil surface. That's because junipers do not like wet feet and the ground here, it drains pretty well, but sometimes it can get really damp and soggy. So I want to make sure they're lifted up, just mulch around that area so that the roots aren't too exposed. You can see I need to fill in some right there because it should be even all the way around. Over time, they'll get their roots down properly into the ground. It's just something to do for extra safety to protect things from getting too wet. Okay, that's enough of all this. We can move on to the next project or really i think i'm gonna wait till tomorrow because i want to see what's gonna happen with these mums oh, i'm gonna be so disappointed if they get eaten should have thought about that though uh, my neighbors all these houses have mums so i would think it would be okay but they also have hostas and hydrangeas and all kinds of things that when i plant them they get devoured i don't i don't know the deer like my yard not sure why but something else later hey turbo <laughs> you do good boy you have to stay he was making the cutest face and as soon as i turn the camera he starts to walk away I don't know why I was acting like I was all done. There's still, I still have a few things left I need to get done in this video. Mostly just some tidying. I wasn't sure if I really need to talk about the powdery mildew situation because I'm not planning on doing anything to fix this. I'm just making it not a problem anymore by just cutting stuff out and getting rid of it. See, these aren't plants that I have any kind of attachment to. They're just, just some cheap annuals, cheap zinnias. Yes, it would have been nice if they had kept going and looking pretty, but that just isn't how it worked out. And that's fine. I don't know what it is about me and Xenia's. Well, I think I kind of have an idea. I think I mentioned it before about not having the openness and air to move around them and they don't get full sun right here, though they do get a lot of sun. It's not quite full sun. I mean, that hasn't affected their blooming at all. Is that, can we see what's happening over here? See, plenty of flowers. But that powdery mildew, when things are pushed in really tight and you can't get the airflow around the plants and a lack of light, that can be an issue. But there's also powdery mildew that affects plants in the shade though too. So it's kind of hard to say what was really causing what they're also not sure if maybe it's just like a thing with the Magellan mix, but that's a pretty common tried and true variety of Xenia seed grown types that I've been growing. I haven't had this problem, but I also don't ever have them planted up this tight so yeah, is what it is it's fine they're out of there it's going to allow some more air <laughs> to get in here you can see some of the plants i've been having some trouble getting some water to them so that will be better for them i can get those planted but i want to give that soil a quick flush and then pull out that rudbeckia because it got strangled out by the zinnias which i was worried might happen when i put them in here and i should probably pull these butterfly bushes out and give them a cut. But I think for right now, I'm just going to move them forward so they can get some more sunlight, get this one out because that, oh, well, oh, that. So the Rudbeckia rooted itself down and then got strangled out. There we go. 
Yes, those are looking pretty tired and sad. I think having them forward where they'll get some more light will be good for them. I do still want to flush the soil before I toss that creeping Jenny down in there. This creeping Jenny, I'm going to toss it in a bucket to give it a chance to rehydrate. And then I'll, I don't know, throw some bums up there. But what do we think? I think it still looks nice. It'd probably look better if I had the trash plants out from the bottom. It'll do. Not gonna do anything more with it. I didn't pot these in there either. This is for y'all. It's just gonna be one week and this is all gonna be going. I'm trying to think. This video comes out on the 8th of October and the video after this or the long vlog after this will be the 15th. So all the palm trees will be gone. All the big palm trees that go off into storage. They're storing, I think, 10 or 12 plants this year. So it's, it's gonna be a void. Lots of holes in the garden, but that's all right. Cause there's still plenty colorful and tropical over here. That's why I didn't actually pot anything into this container. Everything is just sitting on top of the soil, except for the gum farina. Everything else I can just lift and set down. They'll take the palm tree away. I'll put another pot over here and throw some stuff in it. Maybe grab like a super cheap clearance arb, something evergreen to keep over here during the winter time. And, and it'll, it'll all be good. This is fine. And then I still have these over here. Maybe I'll pair up these two but right now because they're kind of closer if they're blooming. I wanted to put these in front of the Adenidia palm and I'm just setting them down. Not planting anything with these for the, well, everything I just mentioned. Yeah, okay. Because I don't want to pot these or plant them when this is going to get drug out of here next week to go off to the greenhouse. That wouldn't really make sense. And I'm thinking with these two, I might just like do one of these like that. I think that looks nice. I put one on each side, grab this one, drop it in over here like that. It would look better if they were in nicer containers. And if this wasn't over here, I gotta get this out. This is in the way. Okay, so the containers are bugging me. I'll keep an eye peeled for something nicer to drop those into, but for now, this is good. Still got lots of color over here and it's opened up again so I can wash the patio off. That'll be nice. There's a lot of stuff starting to collect over here. And I think that's everything. Those are the final touches. I'm not going to plant the viburnums. Wasn't really planning on I thought maybe I might or at least get them placed, but I really need to hold off on that because I'm picking up several more of them and some of them at the nursery are more tall and narrow and some are more wide. Which in the long run doesn't matter. They're all going to end up looking pretty much the same, but for where I'm putting them, it matters. Cause some of them are going to go in areas mostly for privacy screening. And uh, I want to make sure I have ones that are nice and wide in those spots. So I need to be able to organize them. So I'm gonna pick up a few more of those and uh, then those can get planted. We can plant here all the way through November for the most part, as long as the ground stays nice and warm, which it usually does for a long time, that's not a problem. And the Pragans, these are a zone five. I believe. Do any of these have a tag left on them? Yeah, zone five. Pretty cold hardy. We're in 6B here, so those can wait. I should probably find a different place to put them. Oh, hey, hummingbird. How you doing, pretty bird? What you Y'all you, you, can't see it, can you? So it just looked like I was talking to absolutely nothing. I I could find a better place to put them instead of just having them sitting here in the patio, but when they're sitting right here in the patio, I remember to water them. I can almost guarantee you if I <laughs> were to set them, like start to place them, that that can only be done like a day or two before they're going to be planted because out of sight, out of mind. It's not that I'll forget that they exist, but everything that's closest to me will become priority in getting to those. Not so much. That's just the way it goes. It's a busy time of year. There's a lot going on to keep up with. I have been trying to just take it all in and enjoy it since the palm trees are going away to the greenhouse for winter storage here in, well, it's a week and a half for me and for y'all it'll be next week and just relax. Haven't had a lot of relaxation time this year. Spent so much time cleaning and whatnot that I just need to take it all in and try and enjoy the beauty of everything before I have to come and start tearing it all up to take it inside. Which I have a feeling might be earlier this year than other years. I'm supposed to be working on the front yard but they just randomly had this urge. Not that random. An urge I've had for a very long time. This Lespedeza I think it's time to go. I'm gonna give it a cut back like way, way, way back and then can evaluate from there. Nobody probably cares, but the plant's been in the videos for many, 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 many years, as long as I've had the channel. So figured I should document this urge I'm having to just get it the hell out of here. It's driving me nuts. It's a trailer. It can't go further back on the wall. It'll just like hang out on the ground and rot. There is a variety that's not a trailer. 
I could replace it with that, which is what I will probably do. But for right now, it's just, this thing's got to go. It's not flowering like it used to. It used to just get covered in these beautiful pink flowers. Some of them you can still see on here. They're not that pretty, but when they're all in flower, like all the way down these stems, it looks marvelous. And the butterflies and hummingbirds and bees love it. But the sun, you know, it's not the same anymore. The trees have gotten a lot bigger, so it's not doing what it needs to do. Also, I see a plant that fell down there, and who knows how long that's been there. Take care of that later. I just, I think it's, it's time to go. Yes, better? I think so. I know, there's still like pots and things over here, so it's not like the space is clean and tidy now, but you can see the wall again. I'm not having to dodge around it to move through here. It's always hitting me. It's a stake wouldn't stand up. I think this is a big improvement. I didn't cut the whole thing out. I'm not going to dig it up right now. When I dig it up, I'll take care of the rest. It was nice having it, but RIP, Les Bedeza. Been nice knowing you. We'll meet again one day if I have a garden with more sun. Right now, our time is up. It's been real. Hey, Turbs. Unveiled all kinds of sneaky things for Turbo to play with. I'm sure he's going to enjoy that. Freaking beautiful day. Chilly, but I'll take it because there's clouds, finally. I've missed clouds. We're in a drought right now. It hasn't rained in a while and the sky's just been icky. Turbo, get out. Come on. I say icky. Been ugly. It's really hazy out. The mums situation. Ah, oh, these are so pretty. Let's just take a moment to appreciate this while I talk about the mums. I had said for a moment that I was like, this is fine. I don't need to do anything else over here. All right, the thing is though, it was, it was bugging me. Even though from the street, you can't even tell. Like from the street, this looks totally the same on each side. So it's very much not. So I went back and picked up some more mums. These were the only colors they had left. They only had two of these bronze ones, three of the pink. I was like, well, I guess I can make that work. It's not enough to do anything over here on the patio, but it's more than enough to get some more popped in the ground over there. And then about two hours after I got home, the company, Sherwood's Forest, put on their Instagram, they were getting in more today. So I went back today and grabbed a few more. There's only 15 more. I know it probably seems like a lot, but it's really not. Grabbed some hay bales to put some pumpkins on and just, you know, get the, not that I haven't done enough. I think that this is, this is fine. <laughs> really don't need to be doing it anymore, but those bare spots were going to bug me. So I figured may as well fill them in. Finally have some color out here for the year. We had the coolest ficus up at this nursery. It's just, I don't know why I was drawn to it. It's just a ficus. So I put up on the Instagram here. I'd let y'all decide if I should get it. And it was an 84% yes. Thank you to that 84% of you who truly know how to enable somebody who loves plants. Why are you so mopey? What's your problem? I don't know what's going on with him. He's whining, so I won't let him run around. There's like construction stuff going on down there. Going to get these planted up, make this spot look a little bit nicer. And then I guess to show the ficus. But it made more sense to wait till after this is done to talk about something that involves a transition, but you know, here we are. It's fine. Okay, it's not done. I need to like fix the pumpkins. I keep rolling around and doing things, but for now, I'm good with this. That's as good as it's gonna get. I don't feel like doing any more than this. I don't usually do anything for fall. 
So I would say that this is a very big improvement. Spacing was difficult because of the roots, but I just kind of put them where I could make them fit. And it's going to have to do. I did take them out of the nursery cans. I filmed, I, yes, I did. I filmed plopping the newer ones in the ground. I know I had mentioned that maybe I would leave them in so I could lift them out more easily, but these might be staying for next year. I don't know. But that's that. It's done. Finally, I didn't use any type of starter fertilizers or anything like that because I wasn't sure if I'm going to be even growing these as perennials. We will see. I do need to come in and deadhead. There's still lots of buds laying down on the inside here, so it makes sense to come in here and get these brown ones out so things can open up and get those other buds to open up. I like it. There's no color scheme, which bothered me a little bit, but it's grown on me. So problem is that when I bought a lot of these, these weren't even in bloom. If you remember, they just had the color written on the pot. So a lot of them were labeled as orange and bronze and all different things. And they opened up like these two were both labeled as orange. That definitely, that that's definitely not the same as that one. So that happened. Some of the white ones opened up kind of pink. Some of the pink ones changed to a different shade of pink, but that's all right. It's fine. A little bit messy, but I think that's about as good as it's going to get with the amount of effort that I feel like putting forth in this project. Lots of color. I'll need a couple cutbacks next summer to keep them flush out and flowering if I decide to leave them here for next fall. If not, then, well, this is nice. I know next year I'll want to like fill this area with lantana or something like that, but I don't know. We will see. It's supposed to get pretty cold tonight. Like, I'm going to probably move a few plants inside. On that note, need to move on. Also, there's a wild card game on TV right now, so I really want to go and watch that. Let's see the ficus. Let's go back to the backyard and have a look at the new plant. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? The second I hit record, a little tiny... Bane's got to show up. I love the trunk. It's a ficus Benjamin. Benjamina, the Biden Jemina, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Come on. Come on, tag. Then Jemima Nuda. <laughs> Easy to grow house plant. Don't know why I loved it. Parsix is 50% off. What's not to love about 50% off? It's a little wonky, but that's all right. Can get it into a cash pot in this house and like, get a little turn on it. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say, don't get too attached to this one. It's a, a Benjamin Ficus. They tend to be a royal pain in the butt to grow. They really need bright light. If you overwater them, they drop leaves. You underwater them, they drop leaves. They don't really show any signs of wilt, so it can be hard to tell when they want the water. How much water they're going to want is really going to depend on the time of year and the warmth and the airflow around them. I expect for this plant to become my nemesis, so that's fun. I, I love a challenge. It already has yellow leaves in it. It had those when I got it, though. I didn't care. 50% off, it can have some spots and some yellow leaves. It's, just, it's big. It's a very big plant, and I love the smooth white trunk with the other pieces of trunk coming up the sides. I think that that looks neat. Oh, you like it too, Turbo? It's not for you though, don't chew on it. It's making me happy. I don't know why, it's just a ficus. I've grown many, many ficus before. I think the longest I ever had one before I got sick of it and got rid of it was maybe four or five years. Because after a while, like whatever it is that sparks my interest with them, it just wears off and I'm like, you're just kind of hanging out there with your green leaves, not really doing anything or kind of being a pain in the ass. Okay, that's severe. Technically, if you get these into nice bright light, pretty easy plants, as long as you can nail the watering. Generally, I always keep them on the drier side and they do much, much, much better. <laughs> the fun weeping habit, although I say fun weeping habit as I'm looking at this branch thinking about how badly I wanna cut it off of there. It's covering up that beautiful trunk. Now, as long as I can get it the right light in the house, it should do just fine as long as it doesn't get overwatered. And that's on me, so it's gotta make sure it's raised up so it can't sit in water and don't drown the thing. That, that's what'll kill it. Thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody. Is it fall there yet? I mean, it's fall everywhere. Like fall temperatures that getting cold and chilly. It was 39 this morning, what the crap? That's too cold. And no, I don't worry about the plants when it's just gonna be below 40 for like an hour or two. That's not a concern. As long as it's not gonna be frost, there's still lots of warm pavement out here, warm pavement, warm pavement, and uh, the pool is pretty toasty. It kind of creates a little bit of a heat dome here. But when the forecast starts to read like 38, 37, that's why I go, okay, time to watch out because it would be very easy for that forecast to be wrong by a couple degrees and it to be too cold. And then you have some issues with damage, which just happens just about every year. I've just accepted it. 
I haven't lost many plants to cold damage other than heliconias and usually the ones that I lose were ones that I probably wasn't going to hold on to through the winter time anyways. Otherwise, I tried to not grow a ton of things that would just fall over dead should we have an unexpected frost. Most of the things out here can take a very light, brief frost and the ones that can't will be off at the greenhouse, so it doesn't even matter. Front yard looks nice. I never see my front yard other than when I'm like coming and going. That's about it. So I just, I don't want to invest too much more time and money into the area other than on like shrubbery. And I'm going to be pulling a bunch of shrubs out and putting some new shrubs in. I'll bring y'all along for that. It's good. Huge improvement as it is. The junipers were the main focus for that area. And I'm just so happy to have those Taylor junipers finally in the ground there. I've wanted them for such a long, long time. I just hadn't been able to track them down and find the nice, like, good-looking ones that would be the right size for that spot. There were some that were bigger that weren't much more, and I almost got some of those. I am glad that I didn't do that, because digging those holes, it wasn't easy. I don't think I could have dug a hole for a 25-gallon container over there. I could have. It just would have taken a very long time. I think the ones that are there, they're good. You get to watch them grow over the years. Did you find a bug? Leave it alone, Turbo. No bugs. Oh, and it's a bee. We don't hurt the bees. Bees are our friends. You know what's going to happen if you eat that bee. It's going to sting you in the mouth, and then you're going to run around and shake your head a whole bunch and act like you're some kind of victim when you're the one who stuck the damn bee in your mouth. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.